RCV equal RCV equal RCV equal RCV by Parachute Studio. Hello everybody, welcome to Eco Arts class. Today we are going to need a black marker, a pencil with an eraser, a bunch of other colored markers, and collage materials. Have you collaged before? So for collage materials, you're gonna need maybe magazines, old postcards or cards, newspapers, advertisements, things you can cut out to enhance our art project today. And of course that includes a glue stick or something else that you can stick those items on with. If you have glue or tape as a backup, that will work just fine. Many artists throughout history have painted cityscapes or paintings of cities. It's hard to say when it started, just like it's hard to say when exactly the first cities were. It could have been in ancient Greece, it could have been in ancient Rome. We know for sure that we saw cityscapes in medieval times and during the Renaissance. And in the 1600s, there was a very special place in Holland called Deft that really inspired artists. You could call this the Deft School, in fact where there were lots of artists that were documenting cities, whether that was the village square, churches, homes, or even streets. One very interesting time to look at cityscapes is between 1916 and the early 1920s during the Dada art movement. This was a very interesting movement in art where we saw a critique of society and formal art, in fact. They would call it the anti-art because it was critiquing society in very different mediums from found objects to collage, literature, theater. Um, they would even make noise concerts, graphics, poetry, and literature. Many Dada artists featured strange images like Mona Lisa with a mustache. Accidents, chance, irrational things, and the fantastic were featured in Dada art. In one example of a cityscape by the German painter Gross in the Dada art movement, you see an image of Germany in complete disarray after the First World War. This is sort of the reason that this art movement came about is the historical moment right after that First World War, where everything seemed to be falling apart and in question. Now, Dada art influenced a lot of different art movements later, like surrealism, pop art, and even the punk rock of the 1970s. Now, if you were to think about cityscapes for a minute, and you were to think about some of the problems that cities are facing today, what are some of the problems that come to mind? Well, I think one of the very first problems most people think of is air pollution. Nobody likes sitting in traffic. And of course, pollution is just some type of toxin or poison that is released into the environment that is bad for living systems like you and me as human beings. For most people, a perfect city might have gondolas or electric streetcars or trolleys or trains to help them get around so they do not have to sit through traffic. Some people might even want to include blimps or hot air balloons if you were to think deep into the future about automation and ways that you can get around without even driving. Maybe you even are on an electric bus that's super colorful, that has good Wi-Fi. Now, that was me using my imagination for a second. What are some of the real solutions to air pollution? Well, governments, communities, and companies all can try and prevent air pollution by putting less in the air to begin with. So many of them are burning less fossil fuels, which are one of the ways that we get pollution in our air, by using more what they call renewable energy or green energy in solar panels or windmills or other forms. Now, fossil fuels cause toxic air pollution, but there are other ways of getting clean energy. So a lot of communities, governments, and companies are choosing to use green or more sustainable energy. We could also use our energy more wisely and therefore burn less fossil fuels or use less electricity in total. 
Car companies are building more efficient cars, which pollute less, and cities are always trying to make traffic flow better. In fact, a lot of people are idling less, and of course idling is when you are in the car and you're not moving, maybe you're waiting for somebody or you're stopped somewhere, and you don't turn the car off. Well, if you turn the car off, you actually are saving a lot of toxic emissions from going into the air. Using the bus, train, trolley, bicycle, walking, or otherwise carpooling when going from place to place also is good for air in cities. Recycling and reusing things are also a great way to use less energy. Things like clothing, your electronic items, and bags and bottles and glass, all kinds of things can be recycled. Do you think cities with plants have better or worse air quality? You were right. Trees and plants absorb a lot of the toxic pollution out of the air. So cities that have more plants are also gonna have cleaner air. Now they also find that having plants in your workplace makes you more productive and healthier. So there's a lot to win by using plants as our friends and having them in cities. Our featured artist today is Jessica Pearlstein. Take a really close look at her artwork. She has imagined some really cool things. They say that artists are often the inspiration for new ways of doing things and even big scientific achievements. The sky is the limit today as you imagine your futuristic, sustainable cityscape. Remember, you can always pause or revisit parts of this video if you get behind, so don't hesitate to do that. Let's get started. So first things first, we are going to take that pencil and we are going to create what is called a vanishing point. A vanishing point is the place on the horizon where all of your lines meet and come together. Okay, so to get started, we are going to make a big X all the way from one corner of your page to the opposite corner. So you will have two big lines making an X across your entire paper. So now that you have this giant X, you are also going to make a line across the middle, which is your horizon. From here, you could add a couple of extra lines pointing to that vanishing point if you know where you think you might want the road to go, if you have roads, uh, if you have other things you wanna put in the sky, maybe you have a gondola hanging from wires, or you have a clothesline, somebody's hanging their laundry, um, you are going to want whatever it is to disappear, whatever lines are, are going far away, are going to disappear into the middle, into that vanishing point. You might also recall the rule of thirds, which just means that your eye is going to be drawn towards things in sort of a tic-tac-toe fashion. If you were to imagine a tic-tac-toe board, on your paper, your eyes are often drawn to subjects in your artwork that actually appear where those lines come together. So I know for myself, I'm gonna have a nice balcony like Jessica Pearlstein. So I am going to have a, an important location on one of those tic-tac-toe intersections on the bottom left. You don't have to use the rule of thirds every time you make artwork, but sometimes it's nice to think about where you want important things to go because important things should go on the intersection of those tic-tac-toe lines. So after I've created my vanishing point, I am going to take my marker and I am going to start actually drawing buildings and elements of my city that disappear into that vanishing point. So I might start with a balcony in the foreground if I wanna be like Jessica Pearlstein. I might start with a road, but you are gonna grab your marker now and you are gonna go ahead and get started adding different parts of your city. Remember, you're also gonna be cutting things out of magazines, newspapers, cards, things like that. So you probably don't wanna to go too overboard unless you're really, really sure you wanna spend a lot of time and detail on one part.
are welcome to start cutting out pieces of your magazine, newspaper, and any collage items that you have at any point. If you want to start by doing that, you can go ahead and start finding images to use in your collage now before you spend too much time with your marker drawing buildings, windows, buses, trains, whatever it is that you see in your final cityscape. If you are adding collage items and you find that you already drew something that you really like and you don't want to get rid of, you can cut into that collage item and make space for that thing that you drew to pop through. You're just going to have to use your scissors. You might want to draw in marker or pencil uh, where that object is and then cut around those lines. Usually when you're collaging, the best thing to do is start with the background. In other words, the things that are furthest away, like the sky. Uh, if you have mountains or trees or flowers in the background, you might want to start there and then think about filling in your collage in other parts. Uh, depending on how many collage items and how much of this you want to be just pure drawing. And I would say once your space is pretty filled up, then you can start thinking about color. If you want to add color, go ahead and get out those colored markers and add as much color as you see in your cityscape. You might want to think about if you want to have art on your buildings, if you want to have plants growing from your buildings, or if you want to have windows, lots and lots of windows getting into your buildings to save energy during the day so there's lots and lots of light and you don't have to turn the lights on. You might want to have lots of trees to keep the city cool and out of the sun and clean the air. Think about where you might want to live in the city. You might have some concrete and some cobblestone. You might even have a dirt pathway for people that like to walk on paths. If you want to add a space for bikers and walkers, go for it. Do use your imagination. If there's an invention that is going to transport you from one place to another that you've never heard of and nobody's ever done yet, this is the time to go ahead and invent something. You are creating your own city of the future, which means it doesn't exist yet. So you can use your imagination and make up new kinds of buildings. Maybe they're super high tech smart buildings and utilize those ideas as you draw. As you can see, I'm here with my finished artwork. I have included a lot of the things we talked about today, including a gondola that takes people from place to place, as well as a really beautiful colored bus. I have bikers down here that are biking on solar roads. If you didn't know, you can actually capture energy from the sun on roads if you put solar panels on the roads themselves. I was influenced by Jessica Perlstein, our featured artist today, and I copied her geodesic domes. I have plants running all the way up the sides of buildings, as well as art on the side of buildings, because I love color and I would love to live in a city with lots of color, as well as lots of birds. As you can see, I included a toucan here. I have birds flying happily in the sky. I even have a bee here in the corner, because I want to live in a city where there is lots of life and think beautiful things to see all the time. And as you can see, space is our biggest challenge today, getting everything to sort of disappear into this vanishing point in the middle and sort of running into that space, overlapping our different pieces of our collage so that you can see what is in front and what is behind. Clearly she is in my foreground and we have in the background some beautiful mountains, some sky, and even what looks like maybe going out to a river or the ocean. I hope you had an awesome time with us today. If you can take a picture of your finished work, we would love to see it. If you could send it to heyparachute at gmail.com, we would love to check it out. We'll see you guys next time.